Hi everybody, this is Michael Hildebrand and I'm your host on the Sleep Trust Podcast, where I'm talking about how to gain back trust in your ability to have a superb sleep again. In this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast, we are going to answer the question if we are motivated to sleep. And to be very clear, I'm not talking about if we want to sleep. We all want to sleep good, feel good. But if we're motivated to do so. So if you've been doing and trying a lot of things uh, in the, the past, implementing sleep tips, and you're having a hard time to follow through to implement these, and therefore not really reaching your sleep of getting that deep, natural resting sleep, then today we're going to figure out why and what you need to do to succeed, to thrive towards your sleep. So let's kick off this week's episode by getting very clear together about where the difference is if we want something and if we are purposeful, motivated to become something. And it's a big difference. If we just want to have something, you can imagine this to be as if we get into our car, so we're willing to have a ride to our destination, but the car does not have gasoline. So the gasoline is the motivation. And that's just how important it is. By wanting something, you might be able to push your car a couple of meters. You might get out of the car and start to walk. But depending on where the destination is, it's just not going to work. We're set up for failure. That means, and that said, we want to get our purposeful motivation in place. We want to fill up our car with gasoline and get all set up for that ride because we all deserve to have that good night of sleep and we all can have it, but we have to do the things in the right order and the motivational system is just so important here. And there are two ways that we can actually work with this motivational system. The first way that it works is that it wants to protect us from things that threaten our lives. And that's probably also the strongest way that it works. So if there's something that we are afraid of, then we're, we've got a high motivation to move away from that, right? If there's a tiger standing in front of us, we want to move away or fight or do something. We're going to take action. In real life, most people are afraid of death. Most people are afraid of failure. Those are two big fears that we all have to a certain degree. And if we think about our sleep, we know that sleep is going to impact our health or not getting sleep in the way that we should can impact our health. uh, health. And uh, these are things that we can use in our favor to let us move into a direction that is healthier. Um, The same is true for failure. So we know if we don't get the amount of sleep that we deserve to get, that we can get, that we might not be as focused, as concentrated, might not be able to achieve the things in the quality or the speed that others expect us to do or that we expect ourselves to do. And this can be a big motivation to do something, right? That said, there is a big drawback in using this motivational system, especially if we're talking about our sleep. The very first thing is that using this system can build up anxiety and stress And this is exactly the opposite of what we want to have when we're talking about sleep. So that's a thing we should keep in mind. And the other thing is, I generally am a big believer in thinking positive and trying to avoid thinking about the fear more than is good for you. So rather than getting into deep about what could happen if you don't get the sleep, which is going to build up a decent amount of of pressure, and uh, on your sleep, which we know is not good for us, rather than doing that, we should turn over to the second part of the motivational system. And this is the, the motivational system that wants to fulfill our desires. This is something that is, I think, very special for us humans and maybe a couple of animals. We're able and capable of imagining things that we find to be very attractive. And doing so can be a very, very big motivation for us to get making action, making progress too. And in, in, rather than the opposite side, our fears, the positive side will not build up stress. It will rather work with good, positive emotions, 
which are also much better when it comes to our sleep. They are going to um, going to have a positive effect on anxiety if you've got sleep anxiety or other things uh, going on in your life at the moment. So I recommend that you try to use this part of the motivational system. And things that we can think about here is how will it feel if you have your sleep back, you're feeling fresh, energized, and you're going to get the promotion at work. People are going to acknowledge the quality of the work, the project that you just ended in time and budget. And you, you just see these pictures. You see yourself achieve this goal because you now have the sleep that you deserve to get. And these things are powerful. They're emotionally friendly to us. And they're going to go along with a big, big motivation to take action too. Another thing just in regards to sleep, what could motivate you? And this is different for every person. Like there's not a, a one-fits-all solution when it comes to purposeful motivation. You really have to ask yourself, what is the most important thing for you? This could be relationships. Like if we're tired, we're emotionally tense quite often. We react in a way that we don't want to react. So maybe you see yourself being really patient with your kids, um, reacting in a different way in a work shop, meeting, whatever, where you're just much more understanding, where you're able to react in a way that you would act in the most, most positive way and see the reaction of the others, feel how those relationships are going to be so much better. And this can be very motivational too. So it depends on what is important for you. And you have to ask yourself your question. The message here is, We've got this motivational system and we need to have a motivation in the background to get going. Otherwise, that car is just not going to drive us to our destination, which is good, deep resting, natural sleep. So I threw out a couple of things that might relate to you or might not relate to you. But it's important that you ask yourself the question. And if you don't have a clue where to get started, how to figure out your purpose when it comes to sleep, there's a good exercise. I did a podcast on uh, this exercise a couple of months ago, and it's called the big why. So essentially what you do is to ask yourself why it's important for you to sleep. And you're going to come up with an answer, probably like you want to feel better, something like that. That's a typical first answer. And then you ask yourself, OK, why is important? Why is it important for me to feel better? And then you're going to get the next answer and you're going to ask and challenge this answer again with the why question. Why is this important for you? And you play this question and answer game a couple of times until you can feel that the answer has an emotional response in your body. And that's when you know that you found something that is purposeful, important for you. And you can use that to fill up your car with gasoline and then you go and take the appropriate actions, implement the sleep tips in the order uh, that they will help you. And just to give you a better feeling of how important this is, this is what I do in step number three out of my proven nine step system to bring people from often bad quality sleep, low energy levels, feeling bad, back to getting that deep resting, natural sleep, high energy levels at daytime and enjoying their time again, their lives again. So it's really essential. And as always, it's your choice. You can go on and continue to implement sleep tips, which I find to be a good thing, but it's it's what I call taking atomic action. So you're, you're taking an action here, an action there, but uh, there's something missing or you can Pick up on this, get your motivation in place, tank your car full of gasoline and then take aligned, consistent action, purpose driven action and reach your sleep goals. And there's one thing that I want to announce to you right now today, which I'm very excited about. And this is that I'm starting to produce my first YouTube exclusive content for you. These will be short video clips that are going to tackle one specific sleep related question 
in a very short and informative way. And I'm really proud actually of this. So definitely check out YouTube, search for Sleep Trust or go to sleeptrust.eu. Check out the show notes of this week's episode and I'm going to link up the first YouTube video that you can have a look at. And please give me feedback on that. Tell me what you like, questions that you would love me to answer in future episodes of this. And I think it's a great format and I'm really looking forward to get your feedback. So definitely check it out and uh, let me know what you think. And with that, let's wrap up this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast. When it comes to finding back to superb sleep, we want to back our actions with purposeful motivation. There are two ways that the motivational center works, fear-based and desire-based. I recommend that you use the desire-based approach because the fear-based approach can add up on sleep anxiety and stress, which is both not sleep promoting. Also, definitely check out our new content on YouTube where I will be answering the most frequent and important questions all around sleep. And that's it for this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope you enjoyed yourself and that you tune in in two weeks. We're going to shift it to a B-weekly schedule so that you tune in in two weeks when we are going to talk about a topic that I still have to define. I'm looking forward to see you there. And until then, have a superb sleep. Hey there, and thanks for listening to the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to get further information on this podcast, or material that will help you to gain back your sleep trust, please check out sleeptrust.eu. That's sleeptrust.eu, where you will get lots of information around sleep. And here comes some legal stuff. Everything on this podcast is my opinion only, so do not take it as an advice, as I am not a doctor, nor have I considered your personal situation. If you feel that you need medical advice, please consider getting an appointment at your doctor of trust. If you want to give me any kind of feedback on this podcast, feel free to email me at podcast at sleeptrust.eu. I hope you tune in again next week and until then, have a good sleep.